Welcome to this edition of the Scientific Audio File, where Helmholtz and I are going to help Darko fix the video he screwed up yesterday or the day before he put up on the Wharfdale Lintons. Let's take a look. Okay, you gotta love that sweet camera intro. I gotta say, he's got better camera than I do. No question about that. Question. Are you a TV person or are you a projector kind of person? Okay, well, look behind me. I'm a projector kind of guy, but I don't know where he's going with this. What's he talking about? Projector or a LCD TV in a stereo listening environment? Let's, maybe later he'll explain it. Kind of slightly washed out colors of a projector. <laughs> this guy hasn't seen a projector in a long time. He's going back to like 2001 where you had those uh, old projection tube projectors. No, you can buy a beautiful 4K projector today and it is sharp. There is no washed out anything. Because this is an important question that we'll be coming back to later. Okay, first thing I want to fix is that terrible analogy. There is no washed out from a projector and you should not be comparing speakers with a washed out sound. So, um, don't like the analogy, I'll fix it with a better analogy of, don't do an analogy. And as I lower the needle on Amorphous Androgynous's Tales of Ephedrina, I hear the, the, the thump of the needle hitting the record. Oh, <laughs> it's like the first time he's ever heard the thump of a needle hitting the turntable when he lowers it. What, who was he listening to before? Everyone with a turntable has heard that thump of a sound. And the second thing I noticed from the Lintons with that Amorphous Androgynous album, especially on side two, is the presence of the kick drum. The Linton deliver a very present low end and with a, I think, thicker than average. <laughs> Slow down there for a second. Uh, a thicker than average. That's, that's head scratcher there. What, what is average for a low end of a speaker? Are you talking about average of the speakers you've listened to? Are you talking about average for the... Um, Harman target curve. What is average? Just throwing out the word bigger than a uh, thicker than average. That means zilch to everybody. Um, why not show us the Harman target curve? Why not show us the frequency response of the Wharfdales? Ah, uh, maybe something we could look at. But I don't think he does measurements here. So let's ignore this whole sec. What these speakers lack in laser guided precision and resolution they more than make up for in a very easygoing listening nature. And that makes it possible to listen to music for a very, very long time. <laughs> we got to stop there again. Let's repeat what he said exactly. What these speakers lack in laser guided precision and resolution, dot, 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 makes it possible to listen to music for a very, very long time. Wow. That is literally like someone going to a concert and saying, oh, so happy. The violins weren't as precise and the resolution of the sound quality wasn't quite there because the uh, first strings sucked. And I could listen for a lot longer. Otherwise, I would have been out of there in half an hour because I can't listen to quality, precision, and resolution. What, your own, this, this is the classic BS from people who review everything and don't know what they're talking about. What he is talking about is detail. And what he means by detail is a lot of the speakers he listens to, like B&Ws, which are crap, have a very high end, accentuated high end. And it's not proper. It's wrong. It's boosting the high end. And that is is what people call detail. They call it resolution. But no, it's just an over-boosted treble, which gives you a short belief that somehow this is a more accurate, more precise pair of speakers, when in reality, it's garbage. And it will make you tired and fatiguing listening to it. That does not mean you don't want a speaker to have a high end. You just don't want them to artificially boost that high end Ah, oh, equating the lack of resolution with listener fatigue is just so patently false. 
and that means the Linton can be matched with brighter sounding electronics. And you can't say that about the Monitor Audio Silver 107G. You've got to be careful with those. <laughs> so you're going to buy a speaker that rolls off the high end or doesn't even do a high end. And his response to that is match them with brighter electronics. Wow. I mean, is your DAC skewing towards the high end? How are you going to pull that one off? Your amp shouldn't be skewing towards the high end. Your CD should be playing flat. If you picked a terrible turntable cartridge, get rid of it. Don't don't sit there and say, oh, the Wharfdales might uh, figure out the problem with this crappy cartridge. I mean, it's just the worst idea in the world to buy a product and then try to fix it by matching it to another poorly engineered product, okay? Two poorly engineered products are not going to magically make your sound sound good. But the Wharfdale Lintons aren't poorly engineered. He just doesn't understand the fact that they roll off after about 12K. And we are going to see what his solution is to that because he's going to match this to a great, great um, amplifier. Let's watch. I think you tend to find brighter sounding electronics at the at the entry level. So if you buy one of those really cheap class D amps from Amazon, I think you're going to find that it's going to be a good match for the Linton because that thing's probably going to be bright. <laughs> oh my God. Who would buy a $1,500 pair of Wharfdale Lintons and then say, I'm going to buy a $79 crappy Class D digital amp off of Amazon, which can't even come close to the wattage that that thing says it can without, you know, distortion. But wait, he's actually recommending that crap as a good match for these $1,500 speakers. The fact is that according to stereophile measurements, and we'll show them to you right here, these drop off the chart at 12 kilohertz. If you like the Wharfdale Lintons, if you already own the Wharfdale Lintons, do not go out and buy cheap electronics or anything that's overly bright on the high end for two reasons. One, it can't make the Lintons do what they don't do. They don't play the high end. Something brighter isn't going to make them play the high end. But I have a solution, okay? And Hemholtz, I'm going to have to put you down for a second. The solution is a super tweeter. This one is from Aperion. And yes, on the back, you have got the ability to turn it off. Start it off at 8 kilohertz. You can start off at 10 kilohertz. The Lintons start dropping off at 12. Set it for 12. You have your decibel boost to see how much you want out of these guys. And they're super easy to hook up. You just connect your speakers to these guys and your speakers back out to your amp and you're done. So, and they come in all these different colors, which I'll show you in a second too. But this is your solution. Put super tweeters on top of the Lintons. Don't buy a crappy amp. There, Darko, I fixed your video. You now have a solution, a real solution, to make those Wharfdale Lintons sing. And they will sing with these Aperion Super Tweeters. Okay, and now on to our conclusion slash introduction. Because I didn't want to say this at the beginning because I didn't want to ruin it for you guys. But Aperion sent me these. And Aperion said to me, you can keep them, you can do a review, it's completely up to you. Well, I have no need for these guys. My speakers can handle everything up to 20 kilohertz. So I wasn't interested in these. But then I couldn't believe it. Literally, they fell in my lap the day Darko drops this video about buying a cheap amp to solve the problem with the Wharfdale Lintons that drop off the chart at 12 kilohertz. I don't know how he cannot know about these things. And they're not the only company that makes them. This is not like they've been making tweeters as an extra item since like the 50s. So this is not new. And how he doesn't know this blew my mind. I wanted to fix his video. If you own the Lintons, think about getting the Lintons. They are great speakers. Add these guys, unless you're over like a certain age and you can't hear anything higher than that anymore. I mean, if you can't hear above 12 kilohertz, 
do not buy these because the Lintons go great to 12 kilohertz. And if you can't hear above it, ignore them because you're not going to hear anything. It doesn't matter how bright your amp is. It's not going to work. It doesn't matter how much you crank these guys up. If you can't hear it, you can't hear it. These aren't going to make you hear 16 kilohertz if you can't hear 16 kilohertz. But if you can, buy them. They are awesome. So once again, Helmholtz and I would like to thank you for watching the Scientific Audiophile channel. We are going to be bringing out a lot more videos. We are doing a lot of product reviews. So stay with us. Subscribe, like, and hit that little alarm thing so that you know when our new video drops. Thank you and have a great day.